Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, Trader Steve here at Logic FX Trading, and welcome to Daily FX Analysis. Guys, this is a new computer I've just set up, and it was crashing on me last night, so hopefully it doesn't crash in the middle of this. Um, it was giving me about half an hour, and then it was dropping. I've done a few things to it. Hopefully it's running. We'll see. Um, and But for that reason, I'm going to try and be uh, brief today. And then get it sorted out over the weekend or get my other computer back up uh, in, in the office here. Okay, let's go. Um, quick look at yesterday with inflation rate in Mexico, ECB monetary policy meeting accounts. I haven't heard anything about that in the meantime. Uh, employment change, unemployment rate, non-farm payrolls and unemployment rate. Canada and the United States. It's going to be an interesting day, guys. I think this should come in if not forecast, uh, slightly above forecast, which should be good for the dollar, guys. So we're continuing to look at the dollar going long within its current structure. And at some point down the line, uh, we'll start to see a turn in that. But for the next, well, for the next few months, I think we're going to see more upside to the dollar. Okay, that's that. I said we'd keep it brief. Um, quick look at the notifications, the alerts, uh, looking for any trends, yen, yen, it's a yen index, yen and yen. So um, it looks like the yens uh, continue to fall as we've been looking for. We'll see in a moment when we go on to the chart. Um, and then a little bit of euro movement there. Um, euro USD. And then dollar, dollar, dollar. Okay, let's go and have a look. Certainly the yen looks like it's been moving. Uh, let's get over to um, over to here. And we'll start with the yen index. What are we on? We're on four hours there. Let's get it down to one hour. Yeah, it's a, it's a move down, guys, but it's not a massive move. It's not a nice impulsive move down. It's just this move. Now, a little bit concerned with that from a point of view of is it going to continue to go short uh, from a technical point of view. Um, it was a good day yesterday in the stock markets, guys, but let's see if that can continue. It might just have been a good day because of, well, two things. Number one, Obviously, prices are a lot better than they were a while ago, but also with the whole energy um, potential, you know, not solution, but Russia coming in and talking about supplying uh, gas, etc., kind of takes the pressure off the energy prices, which may have been um, part of the reason that they were dropping recently, although they are all overvalued, guys. Not all. Uh, a lot. The markets in general are overvalued. Of course, there will be companies out there that um, still are good value if we do the analysis for them. But what I'm thinking on this one is, I'm a bit concerned about is this has come up a little, it's not exactly an ending diagonal, but it's, uh, it's, it's come up impulsively, it's finished, it's dropped, it's come back up and it's dropped again. Could be a zigzag, guys, which could indicate that which is a bit of a worry when you're looking to do that. Um, so just keep an eye on it. If you have any yen trades on, uh, make sure your stops are at zero, just in case it does take off in that direction. Um, at the moment, other than a move to safety, I don't see any reason why it would go long again, guys. But it could well do, so we'll keep an eye on that. I'm keeping my arm line there. But we'll leave that on just to see. And we'll keep an eye on it. DXY. Continuing to push up. Let's see if it can break out. Uh, this time round didn't break out there. We did say it would either break out and give us a correction or it would give us a correction before it goes. Um, not a great place to get involved. You really want to be getting involved down there. Or if it were, where to drop again. You know, give us a. It could possibly give us something like that. Although I don't know fundamentally why it would do that, other than maybe if the job uh, report today uh, doesn't come out favourably. In other words, if the jobs aren't as um, high as the market's expecting, you could maybe see a little bit of a drop in the dollar. And then next month, 
off it goes again. So you've got to make up your own mind. If you're in something, then that's a completely different situation. But trying to get into things, then you, you've got to look for the right setup, guys. And it's the same here. If you're already in this short, then fantastic. I think it will continue short, but it's almost the opposite of DXY. Wouldn't be surprised if it came a little bit higher, maybe even broke that before it went. Doesn't mean it has to, guys. It could just turn here and run. But you've got, got to always be aware of what could possibly happen. And then if it happens, you don't panic because you've already, you know, said to yourself, well, you know, there could be a little ABC in there. And if it starts coming up, it doesn't mean it's changing direction. It just means it's part of that correction, guys. Pound uh, US. Pound's a hard one to get the head around at the minute, guys. The um, Bank of England is talking about um, interest rates, increasing interest rates, etc. Just the possibility of it, rather than saying, hey, we're going to do this and that. But at the same time, the UK economy at the minute's a little bit stagnant, guys. Um, there's inflation, but there's no growth. So... Um, whether you're going to get an inward investment anytime soon, which would be the thing that would push the pound up. That's what we've got a question. So I'm going to stick with that, particularly against the dollar. It doesn't mean it's going to go today, guys. But, you know, if the dollar were to go short in that structure that we're talking, you, you could well see another bit of upside. But I still think the trend is short. Aussie. It's maybe running flat, guys. If you got that pullback in the dollar, you could well see a trade in there. Am I right? No, I'm not right. Sorry, got that the wrong way around. Uh, if you saw that pullback in the dollar, you could well see something like that before it drops. But I would still say that within, you know, within there, I can see the dollar, um, or sorry, the Aussie dollar dropping within that. I don't see it away down here yet, guys. And it's going to be the same with this. You can see the New Zealand started to drop. But yet again, from the dollar perspective, if the dollar were to pull back, you could get something like that. And then that would be the trade back down. Doesn't doesn't have to. It could do that. It wouldn't be the worst place in the world to get short on a trade. You know, it's come down. It's pulled back. If it's going to do that, then that's not a bad place to get involved. US CAD. Well, as I keep saying, the oil price is high, guys. It's come off a little bit, but it's it's not going anywhere. It's it's trend is up, uh, and the CAD's getting a good boost off it. But it's against the dollar, guys, so wouldn't be surprised yet again if that one ran flat. Swiss, Swedish, sorry. Um, yep. Trend's still up. It's in this. It's whether it goes long from here or whether it wants to do another little zigzag down before it goes. So, you, you know, guys, it's it's um, at some point you've got to, got to pull the trigger. Um, but also when you're doing this analysis, you're saying to yourself, well, I pulled the trigger down there. Um, what am I going to do about it? Well, that's your own decision. It depends on what your targets are, etc. But the, the, the bare minimum you need to do if you're in from down here somewhere is uh, put your stop to zero just in case this comes off. And then you don't lose any money and don't get married to, um, you know, the fact that, that your your trades in the green because often they'll come back down. The softest manner of uh, charge guys, they'll often come back down, just stop you out, and then off they'll go again. It's it happens to everybody. It's the way they move, guys. But don't worry about it. The main thing is. Don't get caught out by trying to be too cute and moving your stop loss backwards because if it doesn't turn and go, then it just goes and goes and goes and you're pushing your stop back and the next thing you're in a whole heap of trouble when you could have got out for nothing, guys. So make sure you're using the right trading strategy. Um, US Yen, yet again, I think this will push on through. Unfortunately, at the minute for us, it's at a double top. Um, so it's that thing again. Is it going to come off from here before it goes, or is it going to bomb on through? I couldn't get involved there. I just don't do it, guys, because too often when you get a situation like that, price comes off, guys. 
and and then it'll bomb on through. And, and it's possible that this is the one that bombs through. But then if you, if you get in here somewhere or you get in down there as it went, um, get your stop to zero. If it goes, you're in the money. If it comes back down, you haven't lost anything. It's a free bet, guys, at this stage. If you get it away from zero, it's a free bet. You have nothing to lose, provided you put your stop loss in and you stick to it. US Swiss. Um, well, they're both safe havens, as it were, guys. And uh, at the moment, the dollar's the, the story in town. So, yes, possibly that's going to continue to go up. You're also in a little double top there, but I wouldn't worry so much about that one as, as the other. Uh, if it was sitting there, I'd be more concerned about it. More chance of that pushing through there than, than, than it pushing through at that point. Um, yet again, if you were in from there, it's still tight. Get your stop to zero. If it comes down again, have another goal next time it goes. But allow yourself to be stopped out. Gold, I'm very concerned about gold, guys. And the main reason being is I'm, I'm in it. And um, I've lost a little bit of money with gold mining shares that I, I closed recently. I just closing the door there, guys. Um, and sometimes you get married to things. Don't get married to things, guys. If you if if you get it wrong on any instrument that you're trading, let it go. Although that's easier said than done, but let it go. I, I got into Kinross Gold Mining Company. I think it's a bargain, but only if the gold price goes up, guys. So. And it's not the flavor of the month at the moment. There's a whole debate going on, and we'll probably have this discussion every day. There's a whole debate going on whether cryptocurrency is the new go-to um, safe haven. Obviously, it won't be the go-to for all money, but the, maybe the, certainly a large share of what would have gone into gold in the past it could be at the moment getting into crypto, and that probably will increase until... There's a, you know, a, a major reversal on the crypto and people get stung, they get caught out and then we'll say, hey, let's go back to gold. But that's all speculation at the moment. But certainly I, I get the feeling that the lack of upward movement in gold over this last two or three months, despite the fact that the stock markets have been dropping, um, concerns me because I would have expected, you know, this to continue having said that if you look at this on a one hour time scale is this the start of a breakout <clears throat> it's just the question guys i don't know ordinarily if crypto wasn't becoming mainstream ordinarily i'd say hey yeah you know there's um headwinds in the markets safe him gold should go long and the only doubt is Bitcoin, so we'll have to wait and see, guys. Maybe you put a little bit in both from a safe haven point of view. Uh, silver, it's the same, guys. It's either going to do that or it's going to continue this downward spiral until it gets to the level where it's, it's cheap and then it'll start to come up. Bitcoin, well, there you see, there's what I'm talking about, guys. So while gold, gold's still busy doing that, look what Bitcoin's doing, folks. Do you jump in there? Well, certainly I wouldn't. Um, I had this convers I had a conversation yesterday with uh, um, with the chap over there in uh, Etoro account manager. I think they call themselves. I don't really know why the the phone you maybe make you feel important, but anyway. Uh, see what your intentions are. Make sure you invest more money, whatever it is. Anyway, I, I always have a conversation with anybody <laughs> once. What I, I, you know, I like talking. So uh, we're talking about crypto, and he's convinced crypto is going to go up and up and up. And um, the point I was trying to make was, yeah, but it depends where you get in. Um, and and I've, and we've talked about this over and over again. And guys, I could be wrong. You know, I could be wrong, but. Uh, people talk about crypto like it's um, 
like it's going to make you a millionaire out of a few thousand dollars and it isn't guys not not at current value and it also does move with with a lot of volatility guys up and down so if you just happen to get in at the wrong place next thing you know you're 30 or 40 percent down in a in a few weeks and you don't really want to be doing that um what i did uh, i'm just trying to think when it was it was probably in the middle of the summer maybe a little bit earlier i opened the coinbase account and i don't messed around with it a little bit guys and the reason being is that i don't want to risk my main account well my main trading account obviously i've got investment accounts but my main trading account the one that that we deal with in logic ethics trading i don't want to mess up those statistics with uh, cryptocurrency because you work really hard to get your statistics up and then you get something like that and all of a sudden you're back to zero or you're, or you're in the negative but you worked all all year to get yourself you know five six seven ten percent up or in, on a good year higher um so just a few thoughts about it getting back to what i'm talking about here guys when cryptos were down here let's say this is zero and they were five dollars ten dollars even a hundred dollars you know to go from there to fifty thousand, or even to go from there to to three thousand, uh, you know, I think Ethereum's around three thousand. That's a big percentage increase, guys. But to go from fifty thousand to potentially a hundred thousand, you're only doubling your money. So that's the argument that I'm trying to make: is that yes, it could double, but it could also drop like a stone before it doubles. And, and as a trader, that's not what I want to do. I want to try and get something within a few months of going in the right direction with a, where a stock's concerned. And with a currency, I'm, I'm actually I'm trying to get it going in the right direction within a few days. So um, not sure at Bitcoin at, at, at these levels, guys. Ethereum also pushing up. Could well continue to push on up there, guys. But for me, if it dropped back down into this structure, that's where I'd be interested. And it's amazing how many times you say something like that or you do something like that, guys, and you've no idea fundamentally why it would happen. And three weeks later, you look at the chart and you go, hey, do you remember we said, you know, I'm not saying that's going down three weeks, just using that as an example, guys. So this is continuing to push on up. Um, maybe it comes into a little double top there. And then maybe it runs flat for a while before it gets its next push up. But um, that down here, if you get in here, got it away from zero, put your stop loss to zero, and then we're prepared to lose it all uh, and still retain your capital, then that's fine, guys. Remember, your capital's uh, the bit from zero up to there. And then your profits a bit after that. So if you buy that, uh, let me just see how I draw this. If you buy um, Ethereum at that price, there's your risk, guys. There is a tool for this. I never, I never use it. And then from there up, that's your reward. So if it comes back down again, you've lost your reward, but you keep your capital. The problem is if you get involved here, then there's your investment now for whatever return it could possibly give you. And given the structure, if it drops down to there, you're deep, deep, deep in the red. Now, that could have happened from there as well, guys. But, um, you know, you can kind of, maybe you can go, okay, well, there's a, there's a, a support line. If, you know, not that we trade support, support lines, but we, we look at areas of, potential support and that therefore from trading from there that that was your potential risk or wherever you put your stop loss obviously is your potential risk so you could say okay i'm going to go long from here and therefore my risk is just that little bit you could always do that but um not for me at the minute not at that that position guys and i you know we could look at this in two months time and go hey steve you were mad you should have got involved well you know at the end of the day for me it's all about keeping the money i've, I've accumulated tonight and um trying to make some money with it 
but not losing it, guys. Money's too hard to earn in order to uh, to lose it, guys. Um, oil, yep, it's pushed back up to the all-time high. Well, not the, the recent uh, high. Um, looking for it maybe to come off a little bit before it goes. Chances are it's just going to push on up through there, guys. EuroCAD. Let's get it into the one hour. As expected, it's just continuing to drift down and down and down. Uh, these things I rarely get involved in. If you got into it up here from the breakout, you know, um, you know, either you worked out from up here that it was going to break out, or you, or you were doing it, doing it through here trying to get it to break out, and then you got into it and the way it went, or probably more likely got in there so it broke out of that little pullback and then you're still in it well fantastic but to get in there well you know at some point it's going to turn could uh, end up running flat and it turns out that's the that's the bottom and you don't want to be in that guys because yeah maybe you get back to there but maybe you don't maybe it pulls back there and goes and goes and goes you don't know you know what could change between now and then i don't see that happening but I'm just talking about in general. You gotta be careful where you get involved in things, folks. Don't run up, don't run after the bus. Wait for the next bus to come along. Euro Oz. Here's a little pull back there in the Euro against the Oz. It's 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 running in a similar way to the uh, Euro CAD. Uh, you know, a few more spikes, so this could just be another spike before it drops again. You're in New Zealand, it's pushing up. We, we, we saw these before, guys. You get that, comes back down, spikes up, and then, you know, comes back down again. It's running flat at the minute. Don't see any big reason for it to go anywhere. If you wanted to trade the New Zealand against something, then trade it against the dollar at the moment. Uh, Euro yen. Yep, well, there's a push up, but yet again, you know, depending on where you can get a get a setup, dollar yen probably a better bet. Uh, Euro Swiss, yet yet again a little pullback there. So we've had quite a few pullbacks on uh, the euro. Is this the turning point? Will it certainly come down into that area? It's something to keep an eye on, guys. Um. But if you look at that, it could easily come back down to there. Even if it's not going to go short, it could easily come back down to there, you know, before it maybe eventually breaks out long. Um, but there's probably better, better trades, guys. Pine CAD. Well... I, I suspect that's going to keep going short. Pound Oz. I suspect this is going to keep going short. Uh, Pound New Zealand. The only reason it's gone up is because the um, the New Zealand is weakening. But if the pound starts to weaken, then it will go off in that direction. But it's not the best bet right there. Pound Swiss. Um, this is one that I'm in. Uh, got in here somewhere, I think, if I remember rightly. Or was it here? Got short around there, I think it was, and it went into the red. Then come into the green, now it's into the red. And I'm looking for that trade there, guys. And and probably put a stop loss there somewhere. Uh, pound euro. Well, the pound's pushing up against the euro, but it's within this crazy flat correction. Maybe from here you trade it down. As we indicated yesterday. Pound yen. Well, yeah, the, the pound's running up against the yen. Um, if the yen continues to weaken, it could well push on up, but it's not going to be your best yen trade. Aussie yen could also continue to push up, push on up. Uh, not a great place to get involved, as we were in the kit the other day. Looking for a, some sort of pullback as a setup, and then maybe you go. If it pushes on through, then look for the next setup. 
Aussie New Zealand continuing to push up, looking for a setup on it to see if it's going to keep pushing on up from there, guys. Aussie Swiss. Uh, just leave it alone, guys, at the minute. They're, they're kind of balancing each other out. You don't want, really want to be involved in that unless you're trained with high leverage and you're jumping in and out and you're, you're manic. Um, Aussie cat. I, I skip over this all the time, guys. The reason being is I don't have a handle on it. Um, Swiss yen continue to push up as I suspected. Would you get involved there? No. The place to get involved was either there as it broke out or here as it started to come up, maybe on a lower time scale, you could have found something in there. Um, but I had have called it long. I called it long from way back down here somewhere, guys. Um, can't really remember what I was doing there. You see these, we're going to start using these um, for a target, guys. Not so much for currency trading, but certainly for um, stock trading. Because you just you just have to put this on the chart. It's the, it's the, it's the wrong way around a minute. Let me, I'm trying to uh, remove it and then we'll grab it again. Oh, what's going on? Oh, that's a retracement tool. Sorry. All right. So I'll come back to that another time, guys. Just remember, I need to uh, get on with this. Cad Swiss. Um, <laughs> this is the one I was in, and then I, I got out of it because it came back down to zero, which is okay. Which is okay. But sometimes you see the downside because it, it's because of how it was moving, guys. I don't know where I got in. Maybe here somewhere. Maybe here as it broke out, came back to zero, got out, and now it's gone. And the chances are it'll just continue to move like that. And then at some time, time it might break out. But for now, I just plan to trade it like that. Uh, it hadn't got high enough for me to take the profit, and I didn't want it um, running into the red. So there you go. But it's, it's moving in the right direction. CAD yen also going where we were looking for it to go all the arrows pointing long it's just where you decide to get involved guys that's what the discussion is always about um there's the direction it's going to go in do you get in here do you wait for it to drop to there it's going the right direction New Zealand yen. Yeah, I haven't really called this one, guys. Uh, I think it's going to go long, but look at that structure. That that thing can just keep bouncing around. Listen, if it came back down to there, it might be worth a trade up. New Zealand CAD. I think it's going to continue to run, but there's a possible five in there, guys. So you could get a reaction off it. Just leave it alone for the meantime. New Zealand Swiss. I think this is going to continue to drop. And that's it for today, guys. Okay, did say it'd be quick. Um, speak to you all again on Monday. I might get a few little training videos out over the weekend. And I will work on the other stuff that I said we're going to do on a regular basis. I just want to get myself fluent in it. Okay, that'll do for the day. Bye for now.